What's going on? Pain, pain, pain. Minnesota Fighting Vikings allegedly fell to the New York Football Giants 31-24 in Super Wild Card Weekend at U.S. Bank Stadium. And, yeah, it's been rough. It's been rough, man. But, you know, we, we did the post-game show, did some takeaways. Go check that out. And, of course, winners and losers for... Final time this season. Oh, yeah. Losers. Actually, let's do losers first. So the entire defense. It was just an absolute abysmal performance and just absolutely abysmal train wreck where, hey, you know, last time you gave up 445 yards of offense to the Giants. Hey, you did better. 431 this time around. But 7-13 to on, on third down, 2 for 2 on fourth down. It was just at every single level. And we'll get to Donatello. But this defense couldn't get a pass rush. They look lethargic. There were missing tackles all over the place. It was just an absolute disaster. And, I mean, the, the Giants the Giants look like one of the best offenses in the NFL, even though they were dead last in the league in terms of uh, explosive plays. But, you know, what can you do? I, I know that the national media is already blaming Kirk Cousins for this loss because of the fourth down throw, but... No, this is on the defense where you allow 31 points, where you allow Daniel Jones to score on five of his first six possessions. It's just pathetic. Just pathetic, man. And at Donatel, where, I don't know. Well, first off, I combined two and three together. So Donatel and Kevin O'Connell for retaining at Donatel, where, I mean, Donatel wasn't going to change his stripes, wasn't going to change the way that he approached things. So sitting in that soft shell, soft shell, hoping that you get home with four, even though you never got home with four, it was just. What'd you expect? And being all gung ho about switching to a three, four, when you largely had four, three personnel and just like tr j trying to jam square pegs and round holes, like Daniel Hunter dropping in coverage. It's ridiculous. And Kevin O'Connell, he deserves a lot of the blame for the defense as well, because straight up the defense lost the Vikings this game. And it had been building up for weeks. The defense let this team down. The defense, uh, yeah, they, they made a couple big plays uh, during the regular season. Uh, yeah, Patrick Peterson against the Bills, Cam Beasy against the Jets, a uh, number of other ones. But it wasn't sustainable. And the defense is the reason why they lost the wild card game. The defense is the reason why they didn't secure the two seed. And Kevin O'Connell retaining Ed Donatel without major changes being implemented on defense, more aggressive changes, it, it, it's his fault. It's on him. He's the head coach. He has overview to uh, go to the defense and be like, hey, we need to get more aggressive. Hey, we need to play more man. We need to do this. It just it, it feels like there was just too much, oh, don't want to step on toes. Oh, don't want to rock the boat. Touchy-feely stuff. No. It was just an absolute failure in leadership by Kevin O'Connell. No quarterback spy. Daniel Jones running for 9,000 yards. Ended up 17 carries for 78. The first half, he ran for 71. Uh, Kirk Cousins as the wide receiver. So, again, I'm all for being aggressive and trick plays, but nah, it's not the spot. Uh, refs is like, hey, uh, I'm missing all, all the false starts on Andrew Thomas and you know trying to get calls right and all that stuff. And shot on defensive holding, which is ridiculous. It's just, you know. Uh, Irv. Had a drop, yes. Where was the pass rush? I mean, Daniel Jones did have three sacks, except basically two of those were self-induced, where he just scrambled around trying to buy time, blah, 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 and it just wasn't working out there. Poor tackling all over the place. Oh, offensive line. I mean, Cousins, even though he didn't get sacked, he got hit about a dozen times, and he was under duress all day, even though I'm sure they did what they could. You know, Bradbury off an of injury against Dexter Lawrence was a mismatch, uh, as well as Ole Udo, I thought, did fine at right tackle. But, yeah, it was just rough all the way around. Poor, piss poor tackling, like we said. Like th There was a play which really broke my heart because it was Kendricks, Daniil, and Harrison missing a tackle. I'm at Breida on third down. And all three of those guys could be gone in the offseason. And they've, been, of course, been mainstays uh, in purple for a long time. A miscommunications in the secondary. Like how many times have big plays busted because an exchange gets messed up? And, you know, if you're playing so much zone, you're going to have to work on these exchanges. But, yeah. And also Justin Jefferson in the second half. He had one catch. Uh, he had six catches in the first half. Winners, yeah, TJ Hawkinson, absolute beast on this one. Big plays, fourth down conversions. Didn't get the last fourth down conversion, but yeah, you know, ten catches for a buck twenty nine. Kirk Cousins deserves to be a winner. Thirty one to thirty nine, two seventy three, two touchdowns, and. Yeah, everyone's going to blame Kirk because of the fourth down play. Also snuck in a touchdown. But the Vikings don't make a comeback without Kirk Cousins. The Vikings aren't viable offensively without Kirk Cousins. And this is the best season of his career. Frankly, if you take out that last play, it's one of the best games of his Vikings career as well. 
is what it is. Now, we, we originally did this list up when Dalvin was going off in the first half, but eh, not so much. 70 total yards, 60 on the ground, sure. Irv had a touchdown. Daniil had a sack. Uh, Thielen ended up with three catches for 50 yards on four targets, a little bit of turn back time. I mean, this could plausibly be Thielen's last game of purple as well. Ezra Cleveland, I thought he did a good job blocking as well as uh, pushing TJ forward on for that first down. Well, I mean, close to that first down. Uh, then you got King Kenne, uh, where – uh, he, he tried to return a kick with one shoe, which would have been epic. But then also he had uh, a couple special teams tackles uh, as a punt gunner, which is good. Justin Jefferson had six catches in the first half, like we said. Not so much after that. Uh, but the U.S. Bank Stadium crowd was loud and proud. Uh, I don't think that random Giants jabroni offensive lineman is going to say it was a lot quieter than he expected. Uh, and even when the team was down, the play stayed loud, so respect there. And then also Chris Boyd recovered uh, Jalen Rager's muff punt, so... Yeah, it still stings. It still stings, but at the end of the day, the sun will come up tomorrow. This team is positioned to be competitive and stay atop the division for many years to come. And even though it sucks now, 13 wins, won the division. Jefferson's the best wide receiver in the game. Kirk Cousins had the best year of his career. Uh, Kevin O'Connell's learning on the job. The defense needs to be completely overhauled, but now that now they officially know that they have to do that, both personnel as well as coaches. And then you got pillars like TJ Hawkinson and Christian Derrissaw to build around offensively, and then we'll go from there. So, sucks right now, but is what it is. We're, we're on to free agency. There you go. Uh, anyways, your thoughts and our thoughts. Uh, Vikings, Giants, winners, losers. Let us know in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Once we'll part the work, put a little something in the Venmo. But to next time, Skull Production Value.